Hello, Falling Spring Youth. First of all, thank you for being here. I believe you are in the right place at the right time. Second of all, if you're watching during the live stream, I want to inform you that although I am live in the chat, this was recorded earlier this afternoon, we don't have the hardware and software to do live streaming really well yet, so we're going to try this simulated live stream for now. And third, uh, nobody really knows how long we're going to be in this situation where we're not able to actually get together. So uh, I believe during these times that our youth ministry and our church um, can actually thrive and grow and feel connected even though we're not able to get together. So with that, here's a few things that we're doing. Um, obviously, we're having Wackies online right now, and this is our first time. This is my first time doing Wackies this way. And um, so I want to ask you, number one, to be patient with me as um, I've never done this before. And I'm going to do my best to try to make it great, um, especially after this week. I'm kind of throwing it together here tonight um, for tonight. Um, but I'm going to do my best to make it great. And, and I really uh, value your feedback. So if you have ideas, uh, ways to make it better, more engaging, more fun, uh, ways that will help you grow more, please let me know. Another thing that we're going to be doing uh, is if you're in a high school small groups, in a high school small group, we're working to um, create a playbook for small group leaders so that your groups can meet virtually over video chat. Um, so be looking for some more information on that. If you're not in a high school small group and you would like to be, please let me know and I will get you connected. Uh, we're also hosting worship services on Sunday mornings. So be sure to check them out. We're probably going to host them here on the fallingspring.online.church. Uh, this Wackies is our first attempt at using this, and uh, if it goes well, we'll continue to use it um, also. Once we get these things up and running um, and sort of figure out how long we're going to be in this situation, we may and probably will add more ways just to help you feel connected, help you grow in your faith, provide a way for you to help others. Um, we really want to grow and thrive as a church and a youth ministry. So um, that's kind of a quick overview um, in, in this new reality that we're living in uh, currently, which hopefully won't last that long. Tonight, I want to explore the question. Given the coronavirus, the crisis, um, the, just the way our world has kind of been turned upside down really fast, um, the question I want to ask you and to challenge you with is, how can you and your generation step up and lead during this or any crisis? So before we get into the details, let's pray. Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, that you would bless them with knowledge, with wisdom, that you would open their hearts and minds to your word, and Lord, that you would do something during this time that would um, strengthen our faith and that would cause something to shift in us, that we would uh, walk more obediently with you, more faithfully with you, that we would feel more empowered by your Holy Spirit to, to really help and lead and set an example during this time. We thank you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 1 Timothy 4.12 says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Paul was giving Timothy an encouragement. Timothy was young, but Paul believed in Timothy, and so he said, set an example. He challenged him to set an example. I'm challenging you tonight, um, even though you may be young or feel young, to set an example for others during this or any crisis. And I'm, and I'm challenging you with this because I believe you can do it. If I didn't believe that you could do it, I wouldn't waste my breath, I wouldn't waste this time challenging you that way. So. Um, I really want to challenge you, regardless of your age, regardless of how adequate you feel, to be willing to step up and lead, to set an example for others, even people older than you, throughout this or any crisis. One time Jesus and his disciples were kind of tired. A lot of times crowds would follow them, and, and so they tried to get away to this hillside to relax for the day, but the crowds discovered where they were going, and the crowds followed them. Now Jesus, it says, he looked at the crowds, and rather than feeling annoyed that they wouldn't let him alone, he had compassion on them. He felt compassion for them, and he healed their sick, and he taught them. He spent the day with them. The day turned into the evening, and it was starting to get late, and his disciples 
we're starting to, I think, talk to one another. And I imagine the conversation went something like this. I can imagine Peter saying to the other disciples, man, are you guys getting hungry? I'm really hungry. And Jesus has been at this all day. We need to go and tell him to wrap it up. So they go to Jesus and they say, look, Jesus, it's, it's getting late. These people are probably hungry. You should send them home so they can buy some food. Send them into town so they can get some food. Really, the disciples were hungry, but they wanted to get rid of the crowds. Jesus turns the tables a little bit and looks at his disciples and said, why don't you feed them? Why don't you give them something to eat? Now, it said that there were 5,000 men on this hillside. If their families were with them, 15, 20, 30,000 people, a really large group of people. And I imagine the disciples felt really inadequate, felt really uh, unprepared and, and ill-equipped to be able to feed that many people. How can, how can we do that? And so they started to say this to Jesus. We, there's no way. We can't, we can't do this. This problem is too big, and we don't have enough. We are inadequate. Where could we find food for all these people? And then a boy walks up and gives the disciples his lunch. He gave them five barley loaves and two fish. I don't know many people that eat barley loaves and fish, but I know lots of people that eat hot dogs, and I imagine that the boy gave him a pack of hot dogs and a pack of buns. Now, I don't know anything about this boy. I'd love to know more about him. But something in him saw the dilemma, saw Jesus and his disciples talking about feeding this crowd, and something inside of him compelled him to go and offer his lunch to the disciples. He saw how big the crowds were. He saw the same thing the disciples saw, but instead of doubting, he took action. He set an example for the disciples. This boy had an act of faith while the disciples were, were whining. Jesus asks them to bring the food to him. And I want to stop here for a moment because this is significant. The disciples could have taken the food from the boy and just kind of ran with it on their own. Just tried to, to solve the problem. Well, Jesus said for us to feed all these people. Let's just take this and give it to the people without giving it to Jesus first. But they didn't do that. They gave it to Jesus first. When we release, when we offer what we have to the Lord, when we surrender to the Lord, belongs to him anyway, and allow him to bless it, then we are better positioned to actually lead and make a difference and set an example. So Jesus took the boy's lunch and he gave thanks to the father and he broke it into pieces and he blessed it and he gave it back to the disciples who were then to give it out to the crowds. And, and before we kind of go through that, I, I want to stop and imagine that you and I are, are one of those disciples. So there are 12 of them. There were five loaves and two fish. Jesus broke them into pieces. And so, you know, you might be holding a piece of bread, a little chunk, maybe a little chunk of fish. And you're looking at this crowd of thousands of people. And I, I mean, I wonder if the disciples looked at each other and they're like, How we, what do we do? <laughs> like, we're going to run out after the fourth person. I imagine in that moment there was a fear. What will people think of me when I fail? I don't have enough. I'm going out here to do this big job and I, I don't have enough. I'm only 14 years old. How can I step up and set an example during a national crisis like this? I'm ill-equipped. I'm stuck at my house. How could I do anything? What if I try and I fail and what if people look differently at me that way. I think we struggle with that fear sometimes when we try to step out in faith, and I wonder if the disciples had the same fear. But thankfully, they went out, and they started handing out this food. Now, I don't know how it happened, whether suddenly their baskets or containers or whatever they had to, to keep this bread and fish in, if they just like multiplied on the spot, or if they just gave it out and then looked down and there was another piece and they gave that out. I, I, don't, I wish I knew. I don't know how it happened. But a miracle happened that day, and they fed everybody, and they had 12 baskets left over, one basket for each of the disciples. Jesus did a miracle that day. 
and he allowed the disciples and a boy to carry it out. Jesus did the miracle, but he allowed the disciples and a boy to carry it out. I believe that God wants, wants to bring healing and hope into the world all the time, but especially now during this coronavirus crisis that we are currently living in. And I believe he wants to allow you to be part of the solution. I wanna tell somebody who's listening that God wants to work through you in such a way as to make the world a better place for someone else tomorrow and the week after that and the week after that and the day after that. He wants to allow you to be part of a miracle. I wanna challenge you with a couple of things, a couple specific things as we close. Number one, I wanna challenge you to pray more. Maybe you're stuck at home. A lot of us are, are at home. I, thankfully, I don't feel stuck, but um, we're at home. I want you to pray more. I want you to take some time, turn off every device that you have, create a focused space, and I want you to pray. I want you to pour your heart out to God. I want you to share with him everything that you're feeling, everything that you're thinking. He is there and wants to be with you and wants to take upon himself all of your anxieties and your struggles and your emotions. And I, I challenge you to just pray more. Pray about what's going on. Pray for relief. Pray for healing. Pray that, that God would help us to overcome this virus. And while you're praying, the second challenge is, I want you to ask God this question and then listen. God, what would you like me to do? And this is going to be hard for a lot of us, but then we just listen. You may not hear anything the first day. You may not hear anything the first week. But don't give up. Listen. Listen for the still, small voice of God. Here's how it happens for me sometimes. I'll pray and ask God a question and then I'll listen. And sometimes it happens quickly. Sometimes it takes a little while, but a thought will come into my mind. And then I think we all play that game. Was that just my thought or was it was that God? I, I, you know, I, I don't know. Take that thought and, and line it up with scripture. Does it line up? Is God asking you to do something that, uh, that is consistent with his word? And if you, don't, if you feel you don't know enough of this, um, he said this is all summed up in two commands, love God and love people. So if it has to do with loving God and loving people, run with it, go with it, step up and lead. So pray more, ask God, what can I do? And then listen. And then the third thing I'd like you to do is ask God, those around you, and, and maybe even ask yourself this question, how can I be helpful? How can I be helpful during this? How can I be helpful around my house while we're all stuck here? How can I be helpful? And maybe ask your, your family that question. Do you have younger brothers and sisters? How are they doing? You could, you could ask them, or better yet, you could maybe just spend some time and really observe and, and try to figure out how they're feeling, how they're doing, and spend some time and sit with them and, and talk to them and listen without judgment. And don't give them a hard time, just, just be with them and love them and encourage them. I want to I wanna challenge you to give grace to your parents during this time. I don't know what things are like in your house. Sometimes when families get stuck in a house for a long time, they drive each other nuts. Maybe there's tension, maybe there's arguments, maybe you had an argument just today. Your parents, they might be scared. They might fear that someone in their family is gonna get the virus and what they're gonna do if that happens. They might be concerned about when is this going to end? When are things going to get back to normal? They may be concerned about or worried about their job or their next paycheck or the economy or what's going to happen to the economy as this happens. They may try to keep it all together on the outside, but inside they may be afraid. And I, I challenge you to give them some grace. And if there's been some tension between you and them or between you and anyone in your family, I challenge you to go and ask forgiveness, apologize, let go of your need to be right, let go of your need to be justified. This is not easy, but leading is 
a sacrifice sometimes. We have to sacrifice things. We have to give them over to God and ask for his help. Jesus said in Matthew 5, if, if you're at the altar ready to worship and there you remember that somebody has something against you, leave your gift at the altar. In other words, leave your worship at the altar and go first and make things right, be reconciled, apologize, ask forgiveness, then come back and offer your gift. Pray more, ask God the question, what would you like me to do, what can I do? And then ask yourself and ask those around you the question, how can I be helpful in, in the midst of this? And of course, through it all, be honest about your own situation, your own maybe stress or anxiety or fears. Express that to God. Your youth leaders and I are here for you. Please feel free to reach out to us, to pray with us. I'm going to leave the chat open until 8.30 tonight, so feel free to, to write some thoughts in there. There's a button on there you can press to ask for prayer. One of the leaders can pray with you, um, and reach out to us anytime. Uh, we're here for you, and uh, we look forward to uh, getting through this together. Thanks again for being here, and again, I value your feedback. Um, would love to hear ideas as how we can make wackies and youth group just really thrive when we can't actually be physically together. I know we can do it. I know God can grow us through this. Um, I hope you have a wonderful night. I hope that you stay healthy, and I hope to see you soon.